Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It's Wednesday, January the 15th, 2014. And how many ways does Obama have to say he's a dictator? Take a look at this. Uh, we are not just going to be waiting for legislation in order to make sure uh, that we're providing Americans uh, the kind of help that they need. Uh, I've got a pen and I've got a phone. Uh, and I can use that pen to sign executive orders uh, and take executive actions and administrative actions that move the ball forward. Well, you know, Nancy Pelosi said we're going to have to pass Obamacare to see what's in it. Well, it doesn't really matter what they passed because Obama is just going to change it with the stroke of a pen. And he's going to rewrite it for the insurance companies to help them out to move this along because, after all, they were the ones who wrote it in the first place. So even though he may be acting like a dictator, there are masters who are pulling his strings. Take a look at what's happening with the TPP, the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Another part of that has been, another section has been released by WikiLeaks, the environmental section, and they call it Toothless, the secret draft of the TPP environmental chapter. Now, he's betraying his base. Why would he betray his base like that? Well, it's because somebody else is making these decisions for him. In this chapter that was leaked, they report, there isn't any mechanism to enforce it or any sanctions for violating it. This is in contrast with other chapters that are dealing with labor, intellectual property, or agriculture, which all contain binding language. That's right. They're going to bind you in slavery to a secret agreement that's being negotiated in secret. So Alan Bollard is now the executive director of the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation. He's the former Reserve Bank of New Zealand governor. And listen to what he says. He says, trade negotiations are always carried out confidentially. Were they not, that would be an open invitation for a heap of lobbying interest groups. Well, I think we got a heap of lobbyists because they've got over 600 lobbyists that are hammering out the TPP in secret. No elected representatives are allowed. And so we, can you imagine how many lobbyists we would have were it not secret? But they're hammering this out. This is something that affects every aspect of society. This is not a trade agreement for the most part. This is an agreement that is changing all the rules for intellectual property, environmental regulations. It's going to control the Internet, everything. GMO, banking regulations. This is a fundamental transformation of the economies, and it's being written by corporations, by corporate lobbyists. But, of course, it's not just there that we have secrecy. And, of course, the NSA needs to know everything about us. At the same time, we can know nothing about what the government is doing, and especially not what the real government is doing. That is, the international corporations that are writing the Trans-Pacific Partnership. This new story says from New York Times, the NSA is devising a radio pathway into computers. Does that sound familiar? Well, the New York Times reports that the NSA has increasingly made use of a secret technology that enables it to enter and alter data in computers, even if they're not connected to the Internet. And, of course, we reported that four months ago, and we're going to have that full report right after the show, so stay tuned and see that. In that report, we point out that it's something that Intel put inside the computers. It's far more pervasive than even the recent revelations about the Tau group inside of the NSA that is intercepting equipment and putting hardware in it on its way being shipped to the end customer. Now, as you can see from this story, back in 2006, we were reporting that they could watch you as well as listen to you, and that they were data mining the information. But the New York Times says this has been going on since at least 2008. Well, much longer than that. But look at the other lie in this article from the New York Times. They say, no domestic use is seen of this. They say there's no evidence that the NSA has implanted its software or used its radio frequency technology inside of the United States. That's absolutely a lie. We were told back in 2001, William Benny, the highest ranking person on the technical side of the NSA, as well as several other whistleblowers like Drake and others, left the NSA over this very issue. The fact that the FISA court, this thing that was set up in the aftermath of the church hearings back in 1978, they were specifically limited to foreign operations and they were moving it to domestic operations. So, of course, this is exactly being done in the United States. It's being done all the time in every way in the United States. Now, the LA Times is also reporting that there is a secret surveillance court judge who is opposing any reform ideas that are being floated by the Obama presidential panel. Now, Obama is trying to walk this back. He's trying to save a little bit of face. And so they've put out a little bit of window dressing out here. But they got slammed by the secret star chamber judges that are running this FISA court. Listen to what he had to say. 
in a blunt letter to the House and Senate Intelligence and Judiciary Committees, U.S. District Judge John D. Bates made it clear that the 11 judges of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court, quote-unquote court, are united in opposition to key recommendations by a presidential task force last month aimed at increasing transparency and judicial oversight, including at least one that Obama has tentatively endorsed. And he said that participation of an advocate that's watching them, a privacy advocate, would neither create a truly adversarial process nor constructively assist the courts in assessing the facts, as the advocate would be unable to communicate with the target or conduct an independent investigation. Well, he's right about that. Because the FISA courts are not courts. That's why we have courts, so that someone can communicate with the target, so that you can conduct an investigation, so that you can argue both sides, and so that the opinion can be made public. But he has something to say about that as well. He says, releasing freestanding summaries of court opinions is likely to promote confusion and misunderstanding. Well, yeah, I'm confused. I guess maybe I misunderstood the Constitution when it put limits on people, when it said that we're going to have a court, and yet these people are turning back court procedures and things that we got rid of hundreds of years ago when we set up real courts. We're returning back to a star chamber system. But it isn't just secret courts with secret decisions and nobody arguing the other side. We can't even see what the budget is going to be for these people. Look at this article from the Daily Caller. Congress to intelligence community, show me the money. And it says there are 16 agencies that are involved in intelligence for the U.S., and the budget for doing so cannot be found anywhere in the 1,500-page appropriations bill that Congress will vote on this week. Their budgets are considered to be classified, kept secret from Americans, even from most members of Congress. Well, how is that different from everything that the government is doing today? Everything the government is doing is secret. And, of course, it's done in the name of security. Now, the Democrat who is introducing this... I appreciate him doing this, but listen to what he says. This is Peter Welch. He says, we're trying to get back the right balance between security and privacy. No, no, there is no balance between security and privacy. Privacy and liberty have to trump. There isn't a trade-off. Remember, they call a prison that is the worst kind of prison you can live in maximum security. Freedom transcends that. Now, look at what Homeland Security is doing. We're out in California with the InfoWars crew. We're trying to take radiation readings because people are concerned about that. And, of course, the government is concerned about that. They've ordered 14 million dosages of potassium iodide. They want it in just 30 days. It's now just two weeks. So there's a lot of concern. And the government is flying a helicopter around Baltimore, a very large helicopter at a very low altitude. And they say they're doing it to get a reading on background radiation. This is a story from Paul Joseph Watson, low-flying Homeland Security helicopter to test for radiation. And what they say is this is a massive helicopter. It's going to be doing this for years, and it's going to be flying at 150 feet. Now, that's very low. I looked up the FAA regulations. For a helicopter, you don't get that low safely. They say that if it's over a congested area in a city, town, or settlement, or over any open-air assembly of persons, an altitude of 1,000 feet above the highest obstacle within a horizontal radius of 2,000 feet of the aircraft. And then they say over other than congested areas, an altitude of 500 feet above the surface, except over open water. So they're breaking all of their rules. They're going extremely low. They're going to be doing this for years. Why? Because they're concerned about radiation. Well, we're going to be right back after the break, and we're going to have a little bit of information about climate, not just radiation, but climate change. So stay tuned. My friends, Alex Jones here to tell you about some of the most important information concerning you and your family's health. Radiation levels have more than doubled in the last 60 years in the Northern Hemisphere from all of the nuclear testing and radiological accidents. Radioactive contamination is now in most of the food supply. There's only two ways to avoid this. Move south of the equator or properly protect your thyroid with nascent iodine. Looking to protect my family, I've done deep research. Nascent iodine is the purest, cleanest, absolute best form 
of iodine to protect yourself and your family. It's made right here in the USA, completely non-GMO. I searched out the best quality and now have developed a double strength form of nascent iodine exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Nascent iodine is on record as one of the only safe ways to detox from fluoride poisoning. Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Secure your super high quality nascent iodine today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gate. We have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with the new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. Well, welcome back. Now, the CBS Boston affiliate WBZ tells us that yesterday, Massachusetts Governor Deval Patrick unveiled a new plan to spend $40 million. And here's how he justifies it. According to climate change projections, he tells them that they could possibly have a increase in the sea level of one to six feet. Now, what's the justification for that? Well, there isn't any justification. The climate change is not happening. We're not seeing climate warming for 17 years in spite of increases in CO2 at a record increase. Now, there's an MIT professor who pushes back on that in this article. They say MIT professor is urging climate change activists to slow down. And this is what Richard Linson of MIT says. He said, global warming, climate change, all these things are just a dream come true for politicians. The opportunities for taxation, for policies, for control, for crony capitalism are just immense. And you can see their eyes bulge. He nailed it exactly. This is a guy who is a scientist following the climate issue, and he knows that this is all politics. And we've seen that in the UK, just this last weekend, the British government was busted for trying to lie to the public and use the BBC to promote their propaganda. Here's that report. UK blogger Tony Newberry stumbled across a $110,000 funding grant for a seminar that the UK government hoped would see its line on climate change promoted in BBC reporting. When he asked for more information under a freedom of information request, he was stonewalled by both the government and the BBC. The UK government has spent $33,000 in legal fees to cover up what was discussed at the seminars and conferences and to cover up who the attendees were. In addition, Lord Hall of Birkenhead, BBC Director General, in an effort to play down the government's use of the BBC as a propaganda outlet, has made statements that directly contradict the BBC's previous descriptions. In the BBC's words, it was a high-level seminar with some of the best scientific experts on climate change. But Birkenhead says the guests were not climate change experts. He also says they were not advising the BBC on what their approach to climate change should be or how it should cover climate change. But the BBC says the seminar was held in order to provide attendees with an understanding of the existing state of knowledge on the issue of climate change, to identify where the main areas of debate lie, to provoke the imagination of the media, to deal with the scope of the issue, and to consider the role of the BBC in the public debate. What emerges in this fight for information is a story of direct, explicit control of the media to push a false narrative that was unraveling by the mid-2000s. At about the same time the government was advising the BBC on how it could help spread alarm over carbon dioxide, people were filing FOIA requests from East Anglia University's Climate Research Unit. After four years of stonewalling, the government said that the data and the communications had been lost. They no longer existed. But someone on the inside who knew the government and the Climate Research Unit were lying leaked the information on a Russian server. Those 1,000 emails, known as ClimateGate, showed that not only were some honest scientists concerned that the models were wrong, 
but that other scientists were conspiring to hide the decline. When the lies about the data no longer existing and the conspiracy to manipulate the data were exposed, ClimateGate caused quite a stir initially in 2009. But the same people who had attended the